My name's Lucy Knight and I work with Susan Rudnick who founded Latimer Community Art Therapy and the team at the Henry Dickens Community Centre um, which started just after the, well as the fire was happening um, some residents on the estate, Faye and Kayla, managed to open up the uh, community centre on the estate which hadn't really been in use um, and was run by KCTMO and it was used to sort donations um, and then it became a lot more in, in subsequent days uh, I think about three days in Susan started delivering art therapy from there um, or type of art therapy a sort of holding space therapeutic holding space for the children in the community um, and out of that has grown an organisation that's now in, I think it's 11 schools and three community centres and nursery as well as sheltered accommodation, um, seeing literally sort of thousands of children since the fire. Art psychotherapy, the, the art psychotherapists that we have are all fully trained, MA trained, um, mostly from Goldsmiths, um, but they've all been trained properly in art psychotherapy. Um, and I think it sometimes gets con confused with art therapy, which lots of people think is kind of colouring in and, and that kind of thing. But art psychotherapy is um, a psychodynamic approach to, to therapy where children um, and adults are encouraged to use the art making as a process in order to kind of release their, their feelings and, and think about their emotions with um, a trained art psychotherapist by their side. Um, facilitating that and the conversation that goes along with that um, and working with them on kind of processing some of the very difficult thoughts and feelings that they've had around initially this was around the, the fire but also what we found is that there are lots of underlying issues that people have been dealing with before and continue to deal with um, that come up that are related or linked in some way or, or just you know that need they need support with. So as an organisation obviously we were situated in Henry Dickens estate which um, you can see the tower quite clearly from where they are um, and many of the families were on their balconies and stuff and so they, they witnessed quite a lot. Uh, the majority of the children that attend our play scheme and, and uh, youth services all go to Avondale Park School which was one of the most affected schools or KAA. Um, so for them there are lots of different ways that, that we kind of remember things. Um, usually we can be together to do that. And around this time of year, last year, you know, the, the centre's usually a hive of activity with people in and out, making hearts, doing different things, making banners. We can't do that this year. So we've been sending out packs to families um, with willow and tissue paper to make the hearts that you see on the silent walks that Sophie Lodge started with 24 hearts. So we're working in conjunction with her to kind of enable families and, and adults and friends to, to be able to do that in their own homes and putting up YouTube videos to support them in doing that and running Zoom sessions as well so that we can show them how to make hearts themselves. So with COVID, um, obviously it's presented a whole new set of challenges. The children um, were used to coming in, it was sort of drop-in service. We'd have sort of 60 kids a day, complete chaos. It would be free play, organised chaos, but free play, football outside, you know, they could move from one activity to the other. Um, of course all of that's had to stop so we've been moving everything onto sort of Zoom rooms which is something. Um, all the art psychotherapy is also done via Zoom or via phone which again is something but it is not you know what it needs to be and it's, it doesn't provide the connection that they'd come to rely on so heavily. So um, what we're running all of that but we're now also thinking about what things will look like as we come out of lockdown and how we can provide some sort of connection um, and rebuild those links that, that have been kind of stretched um, during COVID um, and that's really important to us because we know that that's what got everyone through the last, the last um, through Grenfell. That's what people need now, um, they really need that connection again. Uh, especially a lot of the children are really missing their friends but they're, they're also fearful to get back into a, a social environment so that's what we're having to work on and we know that there are going to be massive mental health implications again um, and particularly in this area the cohort that we have that the the area has you know these children have suffered through a, a huge devastating situation with Grenfell and three years later they're having to deal with this and that's massive that's absolutely massive you know the, the we played hangman the other day and the three words that they chose was death virus and happy 
which is a really, you know, like I, I don't know what you take from that, but I think, you know, we really need to think about how they cope with, with coming back out of this and, and how we support them is really important. The three year anniversary, it, it, this has been, and talking to a lot of people in the community as well, it's been exhausting. It feels like we've been fighting for three years to get some kind of justice or some kind of recognition for what's happened. Um, I think for many people, there are some echoes with what happened with Grenfell um, as to what has happened with COVID. Um, and there are, marking the three, three year anniversary is very important to everyone, I think, in the community because we're not there yet. You know, we haven't managed to make everybody safe. I mean, this, this T-shirt was <laughs> says two years on, but it's now three years on and we still have people living in tower blocks um, that are covered in cladding. And that's not okay. You know, that's not, that's not okay. Um, and I know that there are many of us in the community that will just continue to kind of mark, mark the three-year anniversary and the 14th of every month because until we have some kind of some kind of situation where it's, things are sorted and, and resolved we, we can't stop you know we can't can't just move on from that I, I think what gives us the resilience to keep going is is just the memory of the 72 plus lives that we lost and I say plus because there was subsequently there was suicides in the community and losses that were felt very deeply um, it's become a, a strong community stronger community um, and I think just the need to, to say, no, this can never happen again. And I think that's really important. You know, we, we need to stand up for the children, for the next generation that are coming up behind us to say, yeah, this is not, we're not going to allow this to happen. We are going to make this a safer environment for you all. And that's important. So what gives us the resilience to kind of keep going and to marking the 14th of every month and every anniversary is just the, the memory of the 72 plus people that we lost. And I say plus because that includes the people that we lost through suicide who were deeply affected by what happened and other people who have had subsequent illnesses and, and also the, the sort of immense suffering that there was but for the children, um, those who survived, those who were bereaved, but also those who lost their friends in school um, and the knowledge that they, they are looking to us to see that we don't forget and we don't um, let this let this go until there is some kind of justice and there is some kind of uh, resolution to what's happened and I think I was saying before my t-shirt says two years on and people are still living with cladding and we're now three years on and people are still living with cladding and that needs to be resolved and people need to feel safe in their homes when they go to bed at night and we you know until that happens we'll keep walking we'll keep marking the anniversaries and the 14th of every month.